Welcome back to the With Joe Beebe podcast and we're not going to waste any time today. I need you to get that mind drawing ability of yours and draw a bit of a circle. In that circle around, it's just a circle of labels and they're, you know, business and career, learning, health and fitness, social and friends, family, romantic, recreation, relaxation, fulfillment, meaning, self-image, spirituality, any, basically what I've selected is a really fundamental, important parts of life. And if you draw them in, a, in, a, in your mind going around in a circle, you, you spread them out around a circle. I've got a graph on the, on the blog I'm referring to in this episode. There's something in the middle. And the thing in the middle actually supports each of those things that you might care about, want to get better at or perform better at or have better success in in some way. But what on earth could it be? What on earth is something that could help you get better at business and work as well as spirituality, as well as yourself, looking at your self-image, as well as recreation and, and romantic relationships? What is that one concentrated part of the circle that can help them all? And my argument is that that thing is called self-awareness. Self-awareness, awareness of oneself. I've alluded to many times my experiences with the Nepal project from the ground up with all the nonprofit stuff we did there and how more than the actual work that was done, it was a prolific learning journey for me. It was an amazing experience. And one of my good friends, I remember sitting uh, Scott McEwen, Nick Abraham and myself down in a circle and reflecting on the experience and he said, what you young men will never realize the biggest gift you have compared to others who haven't been as fortunate as you is the gift of self-awareness. And it's this, it's this powerful idea that I've come to terms with that understanding things in general and things happening in the world is heavily unlocked by understanding ourselves. Now, why might that be? Now, why don't you think about it a bit? Why don't you think about all the things that happen when you understand, you understand yourself better? Number one, you are the number one subject that you have to observe. I've been blown away by a lot of my work opens up very deep introspective conversations with people that you might never actually fully have. Um, but obviously because the podcast stuff I talk about, it happens a lot. And I learned so much by being able to observe the depth of people's iceberg, right? The, the, what's really at the core of them. But normally our biggest reference point is ourselves, how we think about things. So to understand ourselves really well is to get some level of psychological insight. But it's also understand how we look at the world, how that might be warped and why. It gets very, very, I guess, not just powerful, that's an easy word to use. There's a lot of things that are powerful, but it has incredible, incredible implications. Implications we wouldn't really expect or realize. It's phenomenal. Now, those examples I talked about, we can go through them. So the easy one is relationships. Understanding yourself enables you to perform better in relationships. I'd argue romantic and platonic. You know, the more you understand of yourself, the more you um, develop yourself as a person, the less reliant you are on other people, friends or romantic partners to make you feel whole. But also you get to observe your behaviors, your needs, and understand which friends and which partners are actually gonna, you're going to thrive with, which ones you aren't. And uh, Jordan Peterson said once that we probably have a stab at five serious romantic relationships in our lives normally. Like if they're real serious and they're a couple of years, we've only got so many years to live. So we've only got so many shots at it. It's not just like limitless, limitless like serious partners. So you want to have a, a somewhat decent selection, criteria, uh, selection ca capability. And how are you going to get that? And it's always so easy, like I remember I used to think, oh, there's no good girls around. It's so it's always so easy to point the finger outward, but so much harder to point the finger at our at our it's hard to I'm gonna 
I would say it's hard to point a productive finger at ourselves. Normally when we point the finger at ourselves, we're overly critical and and unfair. It's hard to point a productive finger at ourselves. Like, where have I just dropped the ball here? So we can then move on and talk about stuff like business. And I'd, I'd probably reference the GOAT here, Naval Ravikant. He's a, he's a prominent angel investor, entrepreneur, but also very, very wise, philosophical person. And he talks about how the, the biggest skill you can leverage in business is good judgment. Because if you have really good judgment, you can probably, as he is, you can probably be a pretty good uh, investor. It's like, and what's an investor? Think of like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Ray Dalio, people like that. They're, they're famous investors. And good judgment requires you to not be overly emotional, to, for you to be clear thinking for you to understand your own biases and be able to protect against your own biases. And anyone who's read Poor Charlie's Almanac or looked into uh, Charlie Munger at all, you see how incredible he is with that and his mental models, his 25 psychological principles, uh, tendencies that he keeps a list of. Also how, I love how, um, what's the word? I love how anxious he is about success and getting caught with the thinking that you're a hot shot from your successes and not not letting your successes derail you. That's incredibly sophisticated and introspective insight and way of looking at yourself to enable ongoing kind of wins and successes. So it's funny how self-awareness can make incredibly high performing in business and what you'll notice is that a lot of high performing business figures if you read their if you read their books they have very profound psychological insight and a very profound understanding of themselves it's like more relatable being in a team a sporting team or a or an ensemble of any sort any collaboration where understanding your strengths and weaknesses enable you to position yourself in the best place possible in the team, which enables the best wins possible. And I said this to my mate Robbie recently, who's a, who's a pretty uh, promising and incredible entrepreneur. It's like my two favorite business books are Awareness by Anthony DeMello and The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfin. That is, you know, they're not tagged as business books. But they're powerful at helping you detach, become self-aware, have a deeper understanding of the world around you, which is tied to understanding yourself because you view the world from you. You know, think of the matrix. And therefore, your perception, your judgment, your ability to think clearly are the most important things. Before we talk about leadership training and, you know, hiring and, any of the other base skills that, that would be associated with business. So how fascinating is that? And then it might give you context why this podcast is themed around the things it's themed around. Learning. Let's talk about learning. Being self-aware means you understand yourself well enough to know how and where you best learn. Now imagine what you can do if you know how to learn better. I'll give you an example. I realize have realized even in the last year i realized something called the third mind from a book called napoleon uh, uh, a book not called by napoleon hill called think and grow rich about how when two people talk and they're really in a com proper conversation a third mind appears that's capable of thinking of things that neither of their two individual minds can think of on their own i was like fuck that's so powerful that's so true so I realized I have greater thinking and learning capabilities in some situations where I actually sit down for a conversation with someone. I've also learned that writing gives me a different lens of thinking than sitting and talking or just sitting, you know, tapping my fingers against the, the base of my brain. I, you know, learned, I guess I learned how to, that obviously memory has been, was an important part of my learning during school, but how it can be a limited tool how to not rely on memory, but also how to encode things. And I'm very geeky with my Notion setup. If you haven't heard of Notion, you quit Google, but it's not fundamental to understanding the point. The point is knowing how to learn in terms of your ability to learn anything. 
But how do you get better at learning? You understand more about yourself. So that's just, I guess, three examples. I've got the whole blog on it. But I call it the self-awareness web. Because it's kind of like whatever you want to get better at, perform better at, have better wins at, in no area are you ever disadvantaged by true and actual deeper understanding and awareness of yourself. Pure and simple. Self-awareness is one of the biggest goals of the podcast, the blog, and my work, for sure. Because I just see it as being so valuable. I was blessed that I was set on a journey accidentally by randomness. That enabled me to develop more self-awareness coming from a cross-cultural experience. That is one of the most powerful ways to develop self-awareness. Uh, what you'll find is that that's rare, um, especially now during COVID. So we're doing the best we can. But just keep diving into you. Keep doing it. But yeah, decide for yourself, obviously. How worthwhile do you think plunging deeper into self-awareness is is it all good or is there any downside to it how can you take it further and one thing i'd suggest from the book uh, the way of the superior man by david data is that whole the idea of a weekly mini tribe of four or five people who you're extremely honest with but share deep uh, important parts of your life with that will teach you so much about yourself by the triangulation of yourself in relation to your other peers yeah, and you'll agree it's important, but I wonder where it will sit on your list, the pursuit of self-awareness. So thank you very much. There's the blog. It's called The Key That Unlocks Every Door. Um, it fits with the thousand doors, right? Self-awareness is very important for leveraging the thousand doors. And yeah, sorry, I just remembered I had another note to make sure you put it somewhere in your day. The things that lead to more self-awareness, like reading or reflecting, meditating, journaling, whatever they are, journaling is, is a great one. Uh, so I think there's a siren. I'm just going to wait. But yeah, if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't happen. So if it's the most important, if you agree with me, it's the most important thing, single area to focus on that benefits so many other areas, put it in your day, put it in your schedule. But yeah, let's move on. Remind you, of course, that, you know, you can obviously share this with someone else that you might want to develop more of this relationship with that will cultivate more self-awareness for you. Um, so you obviously just share it with them, open a door for them, right? The best way to open a thousand doors for you is to concentrate on opening doors for others. So feel free to share it with them. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you again tomorrow.